Welcome to the Insightful Professor. Well, after years of working in industry and academia, I've decided to take a break and join the ranks of the officially retired. So I view this decision not as a conclusion, but rather as the start of a new adventure. So what does this mean to the folks who view videos on my channel? Well, I plan to expand the content of the channel instead of focusing exclusively on computer technology. I'll be sharing interesting knowledge that I acquire through research and travel across the United States. While I will continue to post videos on computer technology, I plan to broaden the scope of the channel, yet still maintain the spirit of the channel title, The Insightful Professor. I'll be sharing observations and insight into a variety of other subjects. So the new adventure begins with this series on lighthouses. I remember when I was young, many sights would catch my attention as my family traveled. One structure that caught my attention when we traveled was a lighthouse. I don't specifically recall any particular lighthouses in our family travels, but I know that I saw them. The impressions of youth seem to have a lasting effect. Recently, I've started to take a more serious interest in these amazing structures, considering the history and stories concerning lighthouse construction and the role that lighthouses have played in nautical travel. I think the sight of a lighthouse has an effect on just about everyone. As I started to visit lighthouses around the country, I've noticed that people of all ages are attracted to these marvels. Having been raised in New England, I find no shortage of these structures in the northeastern United States. Over the years, I have traveled along the Atlantic and Pacific coasts, and I found many lighthouses. But it's interesting to note that the lighthouse is not exclusive to the seacoast. These structures actually are present in many areas of the United States. Anyway, what I wish to accomplish in this video is to examine lighthouses providing a bit of history and to share my experiences visiting some of these structures. In some cases, the history of the lighthouse is documented through factual accounts, while in other cases there may be undocumented stories and legends. In both cases, lighthouse history is quite interesting. So let's get started. Many of us have encountered a lighthouse, if not in person, then through a video or photograph. Although you may have seen a lighthouse, you may or may not be aware that not all lighthouses are constructed in the same way. Over time, different designs or architectures have been deployed, and different materials have been used in their construction. So that raises the question of what does a lighthouse actually look like? In the pictures that we presented thus far, we provided a variety of shapes. The shape that often comes to mind when hearing the term lighthouse is that of a tall, round, or cylindrical tower housing a light near its top. While this image applies to some lighthouses, it does not apply to all. A lighthouse, or light station as it may sometimes be called, can assume many forms such as cylindrical, or conical, or square, or could be octagonal, triangular, or even assuming a skeletal form. But shape is only one of the characteristics of a lighthouse. Height is another, so that even the height is a feature that varies across lighthouses. Situating the structure at a high elevation 
perched on a cliff reduces the need for the lighthouse itself to be of a great height. For example, the lighthouse at Point Reyes Light Station in California has a height of 35 feet and a visibility range of over 20 miles. While on the other hand, the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse in North Carolina has a height approaching 200 feet and it also yields a visibility range of over 20 miles. Yet where its base is located is just slightly above sea level. Another physical characteristic of a lighthouse is its focal height. Focal height refers to the height of a lighthouse's light as measured from sea level. That is, focal height is the distance between the light source of the lighthouse and sea level. At Point Reyes, the focal height is 265 feet or 81 meters, while the focal height of Cape Hatteras is 192 feet. One other interesting characteristic besides the structure is the function of a lighthouse. So not all lighthouses provide the same functions. That is, the purpose of one lighthouse might differ slightly from the purpose of another lighthouse, depending on its location. So this raises another question. What is the purpose of a lighthouse? Consider that throughout history, man has taken to the sea in efforts to find food or to satisfy a curiosity of what lies beyond the visible horizon or around some distant landmass. As early mariners set sail from a familiar port, the intent was usually to return to this port of origin. Let's consider a classic fairy tale to begin answering the question about the purpose of a lighthouse. In the fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel, the children break off pieces of bread in order to leave a trail that they can follow to get back home. By following this trail, the children then will be able to find their way out of the forest and not get lost. While this story has no lighthouse, it does suggest the idea of having some type of a visual aid to guide a traveler. Like Hansel and Gretel, early mariners needed some way to ensure that they find their way back home. So the marking of a familiar area was one of the purposes served by a lighthouse. Additionally, as people traveled to unfamiliar port, it was necessary to guide these visitors through sometimes hazardous areas. So here we have another purpose of a lighthouse, to signal mariners of potential danger. Thus, in fulfilling either of these purposes, the lighthouse has served as an aid to navigation. So lighthouses have often been situated in remote or isolated locations, such as harsh areas along the coast. To serve their purpose, a lighthouse displays a light for the guidance of ships to either avoid a dangerous area, such as shoals, or to identify a safe harbor. In addition to serving a functional purpose, a lighthouse is often a marvelous structure which provides a sight to behold. Lighthouses are often painted different colors and designs to make them what are called day marks. The reason for differing day marks was not entirely for aesthetic reasons. The distinctive day mark or color pattern aided a mariner in determining their location during the day. Obviously, we're aware that lighthouses have a light that shines from them. That's visible in the evening. But the lighthouse structure itself served as a visual aid to navigation. Along the North Carolina coast, black and white swirling stripes 
down the lighthouse marked Cape Hatteras. Black and white diagonal checkers, or diamond shapes, served to identify Cape Lookout, which appeared further south on the North Carolina shore. We also see another distinctive pattern of a North Carolina lighthouse in terms of Body Island. For modern mariners, the lighthouse plays less of a role in navigation, but the beauty and mystique of lighthouses continue to attract us to these structures. The lighthouse often has an interesting history of how it came to be or of its role in significant historical events. Some interesting historical events pertain to the lighthouse itself. In fact, our analogy of a lighthouse to the trail of breadcrumbs used by Hansel and Gretel extends beyond a means of guidance or navigation. In that fairy tale, the breadcrumbs were eaten by birds, meaning that Hansel and Gretel remained lost. Thus, the breadcrumb navigation aid was unable to survive the forces of nature, some hungry birds. Many lighthouses also succumbed to the forces of nature, although none of which I am aware of were eaten by birds. Stories of the battle against natural forces provide, again, another interesting history of lighthouses and their construction. In fact, many lighthouses have been rebuilt based upon what they had been subjected to in terms of the elements. In this series on lighthouses, we intend to explore some of the lighthouses of North America as we undertake travel across the United States. Before we examine any of these, however, we'll provide some general history about lighthouses. We've done a bit about that already in terms of terminology and concepts, but we'll get a little bit more formal in terms of the history of lighthouses across the world. So the background will cover some notable lighthouses located not just in North America. After all, lighthouses were being used by mariners before the discovery of America by European explorers and settlers. So let's introduce some of the terminology. We've got a concept of lighthouse and light station, and I've kind of thrown the terms out together, but there is a distinction. So let's look at what that distinction entails. A lighthouse refers to the tower structure that supports the lantern room where the light operates. But the lighthouse doesn't exist typically by itself. There are supporting structures. So the light station would encompass the lighthouse tower and all of the outbuildings, such as the keeper's living quarters, the fuel house, because many of the original lighthouses did not have electric power, but what they had was some, some kind of ignitable power, oil, for example. So there was a fuel house, a boathouse, and also perhaps a fog signaling building. So all of these supporting structures, together with the tower that contains the actual light, that would be referred to as the light station. Two additional terms used in describing a lighthouse are characteristic and period. Most lighthouses rhythmically flash their lights to provide some identification signal. We'll talk much more about that as, as we continue our examination of lighthouses in other videos. The pattern of flashes is known as the character of light or the characteristic. And what we'll see is different lighthouses have different patterns for flashing the lights. Just as the day mark provided a clear visual distinction between two lighthouses close to one another, we need some way to distinguish between two lighthouses that might be close to one another in the evening when their lights are flashing. This is where the characteristic plays a role. The interval at which the pattern repeats is referred to as the period. 
perhaps another interesting term, maybe something you hadn't really thought about, is the term that describes the study of lighthouses and signal lights. This is called phorology. This was first recorded in 1846 in Transactions of the Royal Society of Arts of London. The term encompasses both the construction of the lighthouse and the mode or method of illumination. Now, a person who studies lighthouses, not surprisingly, is called a phorologist. But an interesting question comes up. Where does this term originate? So phorology is an interesting term, but what is its origin? Well, a little bit of investigation of lighthouse history will shed some light on this term. So, so sorry for the pun. Anyway, the term phorology comes from Pharos, the huge lighthouse of Alexandria that was built in the third century BC and for centuries was one of the tallest man-made structures on earth. Well, this presentation uh, offered a brief introduction and a sample of lighthouses. We expect to view many more lighthouses and will include photos, videos, and information about these structures. If you found this video interesting, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel to be notified about future postings. Because there are so many lighthouses in North America and around the world, we'd like to hear from you about any that you may have visited. Leave a comment about your travels and also perhaps recommendations for uh, our future travels and, and videos, something you'd like to see presented on the channel. Well, that's it for now, and I hope to be back soon with another video.